Animation in Unreal used to be hard, but I just made it fast, fun, and simple. I want to teach you how I brought Master Chief and Spider-Man to life without being a pro animator myself. It all starts with our new free plugin, the One Click Control Rig, which you can download for free right now at unrealforvfx.com slash rig. Whether you're a complete beginner or a pro animator trying to learn Unreal 5, today I want to give you the shortcuts to animate faster than ever in real time using Unreal Engine 5. With the One Click Control Rig, you can take any 3D model and automatically rig it and get free animation clips using Mixamo.com. Check out our last video for a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do that yourself. But today I'll teach you how to edit and improve your animations faster than ever. Let's jump in. Let's use the one-click control rig to improve the animations of your action scenes. We can improve the poses and animation of our characters just like we'll do right here with Spider-Man. So I've already gone ahead and added an animation to Spider-Man using some of these animation clips from Mixamo.com. But once we stick a camera in front of our characters, we can see that the pose isn't as dynamic as possible. You lose that iconic graphic pose of Spider-Man shooting web out of his wrist. So first things first, I'm gonna take our Mixamo animations and bake them onto our one-click control rig that we've made for Spider-Man. Now we have a control rig that we can move around and fix our pose. But let's make sure we're doing this in the best way possible. So the rest of the animation around this moment is really solid. So I don't want to change up everything that we've already done. So in cases like this, I'm going to create a new additive track for our control rig. So we'll click on that control rig here in Sequencer and let's add a new additive track. And just make sure you pull this to the start of your sequence. Now in our new additive track, we can add subtle offsets and dial in our final pose. You gotta be careful when you set this up, otherwise you'll end up offsetting that animation for the entire sequence as it plays forwards and backwards. So before we dial in the pose, I'm gonna create two keyframes before and after. So I'm gonna take all of our right arm controls from the shoulder down to the hand and create a new keyframe. And that's our before keyframe. And then we have our pose on frame 23. And then we'll return back to the regular animation by frame 36. And that will be our after keyframe. Now we can scrub in the middle here and set up our final pose. So there's two things wrong with this. One, we have this unnatural lump around the shoulder of Spider-Man here. And the second is we wanna dial in the perfect pose for our hand as he shoots Web off at Yoshi. Go, go, go Web, go. Now Unreal's default animation controls can be a little bit rigid if you're locked in to only using the X, Y, and Z rotation. But if you wanna click and drag in the center, which can be really nice to modify hands or arms, just go to edit, editor preferences, and type in enable arc ball rotate and make sure this is set to true. So let's fix this shoulder first. I'm gonna offset our arm control down a little bit so that we get a more natural looking connection here. And then afterwards we can offset our shoulder. And just like that, we've already cleaned up that area, but now our hand is obviously all rotated and we gotta fix that too. So we'll rotate our arm back and rotate his hand back into place. There we go. Now we just need to clean up that hand so we make it look like it's right out of a comic book. Now, again, his hands are working for the rest of this animation, so we just want to offset it in this one area. But hands can be deceptively tricky to animate if we're dealing with all of these keyframes from this baked animation. So if we go back to that same frame range and pretty much everything after frame 20, I'm actually going to delete all the keyframes in his right hand just for this section, from the thumb down to the pinky. Now we have the last position of the hand. Let's scrub forward here and let's dial in the right pose. Now you can pop out of camera view to make sure that we're actually doing the right thing. So I'm just gonna zero out the rotation of the pointer and pinky finger. And now let's start to pose these one by one. Now we can go in here and just select all of our little controls and start to rotate them into place. You can even select multiple controls across the finger and you can see you can make the joints feel extra bendy, which can kind of be nice if you're going for this comic book look. Nice, and once we got a good pose, we can go back and let's just make sure to take all the keyframes that we created on frame 23, click and select over all of them, and then just control C to copy each keyframe. And then let's scrub forward by a couple frames, like on frame 30, and let's paste it again. This should make it so all of our keyframes pasted on each one of our controls. And now we get a much more dynamic pose as Spider-Man shoots his web right here. Another cool part of the animation menu is that you can save poses of the different hands. So if I want to save this exact pose, let's go to this poses option right here and we can use this menu to create a pose. So all you have to do is select every single bone that you want to save that position for, which in our case means every bone in his right hand. So I'm going to click on this one bone in the animation outliner and shift click all the way through our right hand. And now in this control rig pose menu, we're able to create a new pose and we can call this web shooter. 
and create this as a new asset. Now we have a new pose that we can use at any time. So to use this, let's reset our hand back to an old position. So just for an example, I've reset our hand animation. So he's just making a regular palm. And then to swap between poses, all you'd have to do is select the controls on your rig and you can do this manually or in the animation outliner. And then you can shift click over multiple controls and then just double click on any pose to apply it. So you could swap between the web shooter or the open palm at any point. And you can also flip this over to his other hand. So you can see we have these mirror settings right here. And for this to work with our Mixamo rig, we would just make sure our right side says right and our left side says left. And then make sure mirror is selected before you paste your pose. Now you can see our left hand is also swapped over. So we could rotate his hand and just like that, easily customize your animation. And that's the whole point is to simplify this whole part of the process. Next, let's add weapons to our characters. Whether it's battle axes or pulse rifles, the steps are super simple. Here I've added weapons to Soldier 76, Kratos, and Master Chief. And the process is exactly the same for each character. You'll see that the weapon here with Kratos' frost axe is saved as a separate static mesh. So you wanna make sure that the weapon is completely isolated from the model of your 3D character. And all you have to do is set that axe model to be movable so we can animate it around and then click and drag it onto our skeletal mesh. And now we can attach this to any bone in our rig. In this case, I'm gonna add it to the right hand. Now it won't snap to the position of the hand until we press on this reset button. And then all we have to do is rotate it into place, just like that. Now we can create a new level sequence. Now I can add a new battle axe animation and you can see that the ax sticks to his hand for the entire time. And you can continue to reposition this and perfect it for each shot. And it's the same exact steps to add the plasma rifle onto Master Chief. Master Chief has his own 3D model and we imported his gun separately so that we can add it into our scene and simply parent it to his right hand. So let's walk through how to add some keep alive animation and make your shots more interesting. With Master Chief, we took a basic Mixmo animation, but he kind of just stands still here and we want to add a little bit more movement and make him feel like a badass. We want him to feel alive and like a real person. So let's start with his head because that's where the audience is going to look right away. So here we are in the head control here inside of sequence. And when you look at this at first glance, it might not feel all that creative. It can feel a little bit hard to understand how to make cool controls and add some of these animations. Well, the simplest way is just to make sure that auto keyframe is enabled. And then at any point in your timeline, you can rotate or move any bone and it will change the animation. And you can see we've created a keyframe right here. And this is the easiest way to add some animation. We can see this feels a little bit rigid and a little bit rough. So how can we make this animation smoother and more natural? Well, you wanna start by placing keyframes in here, but the best way is actually by clicking on our animation graph. And this will pop open a brand new editor where we can scrub backwards and forwards through time and start to get a better understanding of what each key frame is doing in our shot. And again, for simplicity's sake here, we're only going to worry about rotating our bones. So right now I have my head control selected and I'm going to highlight over the rotation keyframes only. Now you can right click in here to move around in your timeline and press F to frame up on all the keyframes together. But again, what are we looking at here? How can I see what's happening in the viewport and understand how to manipulate it inside of the curve editor? Well, the easiest way is just by looking at the colors. This might be so simple at first, but it's going to unlock everything with animation. So if we wanted to nod our character's head up or down, let's look at our rotation gizmo. We'd have to grab on this red axis and then we could move his head up or down. So if it's the red axis, let's just find the red color in our curve editor. We can see that's the roll rotation. And I'm going to press on the middle mouse button to create a little keyframe right here. And now if I click or drag this up or down, you can see that I'm directly manipulating the same thing. But now I can also change how these keyframes animate between one keyframe to another. And we can do a lot of complex animation just by tweaking these curves and seeing it update live in the viewport. Now this is great if he's looking at a plane overhead, but we can set this back to normal by adjusting the handles in between these keyframes and moving it back and forth to something that looks a little bit better. Now you can see right here, he tilts his head really fast. And now in the curve editor, we can see, oh yeah, in the Y graph, the green graph, he must be turning his head. So if we wanted to smooth that out, we have a couple doubled up keyframes, which can sometimes add the jittery feel. A lot of people blame that on Unreal Engine, but a lot of times it's just these jittery keyframes. So let's remove any of these doubled up keyframes. And another great shortcut to know is Control W. Once we press Control W, now we can stretch out these handles and manipulate them a lot more and what you're probably used to in After Effects or other animation tools. 
So again, it's a little bit extreme, so let's smooth this out and let's actually just dial down the intensity. And now we have him looking at the camera at the end, but if we wanted to change that eye line and just move his head to the right, again, you can see that we made that one keyframe update, but now it's gonna just bob his head back and forth. Instead of doing that, now that we know what we know, we can just grab those keyframes together and slide down all of the animation until the head is in the right place. If we wanted him to look lower, again, we would go to our red channel and we would drag those keyframes down as well. Let's say his head is also tilting a little bit too much right there. One way that we could solve this is simply by dragging up this keyframe and moving them all one by one. But one other way that you can do this is by selecting all of these keyframes together and then click on this transform tool, this little icon right here. And this will let you manipulate your keyframes in the curve graph, but it'll let you stretch and squash them in a proportional way. So you can make them take more time and spread them out over time, or you can change the intensity of how much our character's head is turning or their hands or any other part of the animation. So if I didn't want them to look so far to the left right here, we would set our midpoint to the top of this cage right here, and then we could stretch this in towards the bottom. And now we can manipulate all these keyframes together and get some nice smooth animation. If we wanna make this rifle feel heavier and have more weight to it, what we need to do is add a delay. As he stands up, the rifle would take longer to propel upwards. So now with our one-click control rigs, we can take and manipulate any one of these controls to make the gun feel heavier. So let's grab this right hand, the one that's manipulating the gun. What if we added a little bit of bounce and a little bit of weight to this rifle as he lifts it up? So I'll find that right forearm control, and you can see right here, I added some rotation to that blue rotation channel, the yaw channel, to give it a little bit of extra weight to make sure that as his body lifts up, that rifle starts to get pushed down. And again, it's really easy to manipulate right here in the curve editor. So there you go. Try that out and use the curve editor next time you're trying to animate in Unreal. I think it'll make your animations a lot better, a lot smoother, and remove a lot of the jittering that you might be experiencing before. And if you're new to Unreal Engine or you're struggling to piece the entire workflow together, check out Unreal Fundamentals. We'll take you from a complete beginner to making your own films in Unreal 5 in just 30 minutes a day. Check it out at unrealforvfx.com slash fundamentals. Hit subscribe down below for more tutorials, breakdowns, and behind the scenes just like this. And I'll see you next time. Peace.